Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm filming in a different background today because I thought I would try this out and that way you can get to see my new pets. For those of you that follow me on Instagram know that I have been spamming my stories with my new pets. They're currently in the banana, I don't know if you can see. They're a little bit shy so this one you see here is Kiki and yeah I named her after Kiki from Kiki's delivery service. There's another little brown one. Oh, there you go. That's Coco. So I'm just going to leave them in the background while I go on ahead with today's video. Just like the title says, today we are looking at the top five instruments to learn. If you're starting up a new instrument and you're not sure which one's the right one for you, then make sure you stay and watch this video. Now, obviously I haven't played every single instrument in the world. For those of you that know, I only play piano and flute. So this is going to be somewhat of a biased review. But I do have a good general understanding of most instruments given my classical background. So I thought I would give my two cents on this topic. I've decided to rate these instruments following these three criteria. Harmonic and technical versatility, repertoire and ensemble compatibility. So let's start with number five on the list, the recorder. I'm just joking. I probably just lost half of my watch time with that joke. Anyways, number five on the list is drums. Now, this is pretty much the entire reason for me to put this instrument on the list. The drum is a super old instrument that dates all the way back to 5500 BC. But the modern drum kit that we see right now actually developed in the 1920s and became a central part of jazz. So this is an instrument that is pretty relevant to the current generation. Let's take a look at harmonic and technical versatility. Now, of course, you can't play pitched notes on the drum kit, but what it lacks in harmony, it definitely makes up for it in technical versatility. Originally, these individual percussion instruments were supposed to be played separately until percussionists started experimenting and combining things together. Also adding on the foot pedal which allowed the player to play multiple instruments at the same time. Did you just pee? Did you just pee on my table? Because of this, the drum kit actually became quite virtuosic. I always feel like you need like eight arms or something to be able to play the drum kit well. The reason it is number five on the list is because it unfortunately can't play any pitched notes, which rules out harmony completely. And there are much less nuances that come with an instrument that's not able to provide harmony, such as the drum kit. Okay, let's move on to repertoire. I would say the repertoire for drum kit is definitely geared way more towards pop music, or even jazz, since it was invented really only after 1920s when jazz started becoming more popular. So I would say repertoire is still great, Although it might not be something you would be looking for if you're more interested in learning classical repertoire. But if you like pop and jazz music, then it's a really good fit. Okay, so ensemble compatibility wise, it's not too bad. Most pairings that would go with a drum kit would be other brass instruments, kind of like what you would see in a jazz band. So again, you're more limited to that rather than classical or chamber groups such as orchestras. It's also definitely more of an instrument you would play with other instruments rather than on its own. Kiki, you're exercising, finally. Um, okay, moving on to number four, the guitar, which includes both acoustic and electric. Guitar also has really early origins around the 16th century, although it does look really different to the guitar that we have today. In terms of harmonic versatility, it's pretty versatile. It can play multiple notes at the same time, meaning chords are possible, meaning harmony is possible, which makes it a really great solo instrument. Due to the nature of the instrument, I would say it's much more mellow in its expression. For example, compared to the violin. So there are less virtuosic qualities and technical prowess. It's also meant to be plucked, which means naturally the phrases will take on a more separated quality rather than this long, smooth legato tone, which I think contributes largely to the overall mellow sound of the guitar. The best perk though, in my opinion, is the versatility in its repertoire. You've pretty much got the best of both worlds. Anything from the Renaissance period all the way to now is game. So you're not really just limited to classical or pop music, which I think is pretty awesome. The only downside I would really say is that there aren't a huge list of works by major composers like Mozart, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, etc. Although I did find out that Paganini wrote a few works specifically for the guitar, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, so moving on to ensemble compatibility. 
I would say in comparison to the drum kit, it does one-up it in terms of how compatible it is with other instruments. But it also isn't very common for it to be included in orchestras or classical chamber groups. But it can pretty much do it with any other instrument you want. And when you switch to the electric guitar, the possibilities expands immensely and crosses you over to the genre of pop and rock. Okay, moving on to number three, the cello. Okay, so a quick disclaimer here. As the list moves up, it's going to get more and more predictable. You can probably guess what the top three are. So stay until the end to find out if you guess right. Just trying to save my watch time from the recorded joke I made. Okay, so yes, back to the cello. It was also developed around the same time in the 16th century, just like the guitar. And back then it was used mainly as a bass line. It didn't really start emerging as a solo instrument until the 17th and 18th century. The cello is often described as having one of the most expressive and rich sounds comparable to the human voice. It also has one of the widest range of four octaves, which makes it harmonically very versatile. It can provide harmony as a bass line in orchestral settings, or it can also be great as a solo instrument. A really good example of this would be the famous Bach Petitas. However, the greatest element that differentiates it from the guitar is the bow. So now instead of plucking the instrument, the player can use the bow to connect each note and make long and expressive phrases and dynamics and tone qualities, etc. The possibilities become endless. When it comes to repertoire, you also have a lot of options. It has a rich selection of repertoire from Baroque all the way to Romantic period with major works from a lot of major composers, which is one big advantage it has in comparison to the guitar, in my opinion. That's the thing with the flute, and don't get me wrong, I love, love, love my instrument. But we just don't have as many big works from major composers like that, so... So sometimes you kind of feel like you miss out a little bit because of that. Anyways, you can tell I'm pretty jealous. So yes, you've got a really good selection of classical repertoire. And although I wouldn't really say cello is um, part of the current pop music trend, it is versatile enough that it can play arrangements of pop music. A great example again is two cellos. Having said that though, I would still say it's a pretty well-known instrument in today's time. I know the average person may not always know that it's called the cello and they think it's called a big violin, but most people, when they see it, they will recognize the instrument. So lastly, moving on to ensemble compatibility. You've got orchestras, string quartets, quintets, trios, duets with pretty much any combination that you want. And of course, you can go solo as well. Cellos naturally have more options when it comes to playing in orchestras and different groups. So that's definitely a bonus. All right, number two, the violin. Okay, so for the last two, I'm really gonna cut down on my explanations because it's gonna get pretty self-explanatory. The violin's history and structure is also very similar to the cello. Now, rather than being a supportive bass line, it was known more for its singing qualities when it was first invented. So it quickly became a really popular instrument amongst street musicians and nobles. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I am not a string player. Hey, Gigi. Hey. Don't wander off. Come back. Oh my gosh. Okay, now the violin is a lot smaller in size compared to the cello, which means that the fingerboard is also smaller, which means that it is less spaced out. This would mean that it's more agile and it allows the player to perform at a higher level of virtuosity compared to the cello. If there are any string players watching this and want to add anything, please comment down below. Some really great examples that demonstrate the harmonic versatility of the violin would be the Paganini Caprices and the Bach's Dracon. Now, when it comes to pop music, the violin is still pretty much relevant. Particularly, electric violin has risen in its popularity in the recent years due to artists like Lindsay Sterling and this guy. If you know, you know. All right, so let's talk about ensemble compatibility. I would say it's pretty similar to what you would expect as a cellist. You can also play in chamber groups like string quartets, quintets, and orchestras as well. And there are lots of different combinations you can do with the violin. And again, it can also be great as a solo instrument. So it's pretty similar. Okay, lucky last number one, you may have guessed it already, it is the piano. 
The piano is probably the only instrument that scores highest in all the criteria. It easily has the largest range of 7 octaves and is arguably one of the most technically challenging instruments to master with virtuosic composers such as Liszt, Paganini and Rachmaninoff just to name a few. Originally, the instrument started off as the harpsichord, which was much more limited. It only had one dynamic and it was also plucked, so long expressive phrases were not possible. However, in time, the harpsichord developed into the pianoforte, which is the modern piano that we see today. The newfound versatility in the pianoforte allowed composers to write really crazy works that I don't even know how it's humanly possible to play. Like, what was Liszt smoking when he wrote this? Anyway, this brings me to repertoire, and I really don't need to say more. The world is your oyster. Any major or even minor composer would have written works for the piano. Any pop song can be arranged for the piano. Hell, you can even play orchestral reductions on the piano. I see it as a foundational instrument and one of the best instruments that you can possibly start with. In terms of ensemble compatibility, it's also really flexible. Pianos aren't necessarily a staple instrument of the orchestra, but it's often used as a complement for other instruments because of its ability to provide harmony. For example, pretty much every single work written for the flute will have a piano complement to go with it for the piece to be complete. The same skills on the piano is also transferable to the synthetic piano, which means you can also cross over to the genre of rock and pop. So you're also not just limited to classical music. So there you have my top five picks of instruments that you should learn. Please let me know what you think and feel free to leave any comments down below if you want to add anything. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification button because I don't post as often these days. So please turn on the notification button so that you know when I upload a video next time. So also follow my social media if you want to see more cute stories of Kiki and Coco in the background there. I post a lot of stories on them on my Instagram. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you back here next time. Bye!